各位，想象一下，中美两国在同一条 AI 赛道上狂奔，美国与巨额资本和全球顶尖科研起步，而中国以惊人的执行力和庞大的应用市场来追赶。很多人以为差距是几年，但零一万物 CEO 李开复给出一个更刺激的数字，那就是只有三到四个月。你没有听错。这一场人工智能竞赛的差距比一个季度的财报还要短，这可不是空口说白话。美国的确在模型研发和商业化上先行一步，硅谷公司靠订阅、云服务变现能力超强，企业愿意付费，资本源源不断。但中国的故事更像是一场需求催生创新的速度赛，资源有限，资本紧张，却逼出更低成本。更快落地的应用奇迹，从轿车到生鲜配送，从微信到移动支付，中国早已证明了应用驱动的创造力。而这一次 ，AI 并不例外。真正对战的点在开源和闭源。美国巨头担心商业机密和竞争压力，纷纷筑起围墙，而中国的顶级团队反其道而行 ，DeepSeek 还有阿里云等大模型直接开源。让开发者可以自行修改、部署和信任。那结果，会连美国的高校学生和研究人员都在用中国的开源模型，不是因为国籍，而是因为他们更开放、更好用。你们看，这是不是很讽刺？再看一下硬件和制造业，美国在前沿算法和算力上有强势的优势，但中国的供应链和成本控制。让机器人和 AI 硬件的价格有可能低到只有美国的五分之一，甚至有可能是十分之一。你能想象一台媲美美国产品的机器人以白菜价进入市场来冲击吗？李开复更直言，美国的百里岗位会首先感觉到 AI 革命的含义，从招聘、法务、AI 智能体都能干。中国暂时以制造业为主，冲击节奏较慢。但拥有庞大的蓝领群体和全球最完善的供应链，一旦 AI 和机器人深度结合，落地的速度有可能全面反超。那问题是，美国的模式高利润闭环，能否抵挡住中国开源的浪潮呢？当中国 AI 从三个月的差距拉到定价崎岖，甚至以低价大规模输出，那美国和全球的消费者会如何选择呢？我们别急。证券里，李开不会用更犀利的数字和一线的观察来告诉你这一场 AI 四级赛跑的下一个拐点。Well, the in terms of the models and the technology,、uh, China is three to four months behind the U.S. and、uh, is tracking. And in terms of applications, I think both countries are developing very quickly.、Uh, U.S. is probably monetizing better. Uh, the companies are worth more, and that will、uh, give the American companies more capital to build more. But China has shown that、uh, necessity is the mother of innovation. So, with、uh, less resources,、uh, less capital, China has actually managed to catch up、uh, both in technology and in execution.、Uh, so. The one interesting new difference is open source versus closed source,、uh, because of the American business models and the rivalry actually among the American companies to first reach AGI.、Uh, everyone is keeping the model very closed and inaccessible to users. So the open source, I think, is becoming a new trend. More and more companies want it because you can have the model, you can modify it, you can use it, you can trust it, you can host it on site. And actually, the open source models are being led by China right now. In terms of some of these global AI firms, you say China maybe three to four months behind. But what is your sense of? Which ones are doing a better job at monetizing things?、Uh, so far,、uh, the American companies got a head start, and、um, I think American businesses and consumers are willing, more, much more willing, to pay for a subscription uh, or uh, SaaS and other kinds of fees.、Uh, so the American companies are、uh, monetizing better. And that's perhaps because there's a head start, and you know Chinese companies have always done great in applications.、Uh, WeChat is much better than WhatsApp.、Uh, the Chinese、um, uh, taxi hailing services, grocery delivers, 
services are better than the American ones. So I expect the Chinese application developers uh, over time will catch up. But the Americans are ahead in monetiz monetization right now. Will this be the year of AI apps? And does that mean really success for those Chinese firms that you talk about? And when it comes to commercialization and monetization, given how ruthless competition is in China, do you expect to see more consolidation? Well, in applications, no, because when, when mobile revolution started, many, many companies built uh, interesting applications. Uh, ByteDance, Meituan, Pinduoduo, Didi have all become very valuable companies. So there will be many opportunities uh, consolidation will probably happen at the model level. Uh, uh, either China or U.S. will end up with anywhere between two and four top models uh, because training models are just too expensive, so that will naturally consolidate. How challenging is it for smaller AI companies in China to prosper, given the funding situation, and that they're also blocked out of U.S. funding because of all of these restrictions? Uh, these are definitely uh, substantial challenges, but as I said, uh, necessity breeds innovation. So in my company, as an example, uh, in Zero One Dot AI, we're focused on creating value, making AI agents and building a consulting workforce to help companies after digital transformation to reach AI transformation. It's our belief that if there's a strong value proposition, uh, companies will pay, whether in China, US, or, or in other countries. And I think being pushed and forced to uh, essentially break even faster, I think is an interesting way uh, that puts pressure, but also may create uh, valuable services uh, that leads to companies that are actually profitable uh, earlier. Uh, unlike uh, the American AI giants are all burning tens of billions of dollars with no sight of profitability in sight. How China has been preparing perhaps the workforce and skills towards the AI sector. What are you seeing in terms of that? Well, I think the biggest revolution we're seeing is, you know, we started with the uh, chat GPT type of um, AI that can uh, converse and uh, write. Then we have reasoning agents that can think and, and reason and deduce. And now we have AI agents that can do and create business outcomes. So that will certainly put pressure on companies and workers worldwide as AI can do more and more tasks. And it's not just generating a document, but it's getting something done, right? For HR department being able to do recruiting for you, uh, for the legal department being able to scan and uh, approve legal documents for you. So that puts a pressure worldwide. And interestingly, uh, the pace for uh, changing the future of work is a lot faster in white collar uh, work, which is of course global, but perhaps more um, US and India, which does a lot of outsourcing. Uh, China still is largely a manufacturing country. So the blue collar work, we're not near seeing anywhere near this, the speed of job replacement by AI because you got to make robots and uh, work in, um, uh, uh, in the supply chains and um, uh, factory, different factory environments. Every company is different. So actually, I would predict that challenges to work will happen in the U.S. first. First, because uh, of the white collar revolution, uh, AI revolution will happen first. Secondly, American workers are paid more. So companies are more incentivized to go after the job displacement. Um, I think China will face the same issues, but a little bit slower. When it comes to the AI evolution and development itself, given what you say about how China is really focused, of course, on being a manufacturing powerhouse and how that's how it developed its economy, does that give China a special edge when it comes to really collecting the massive amount of data needed in order for AI development, given that this AI competition global is not necessarily a one-size-fits-all kind of uh, scenario out there. What are the benefits for China of having this base? I think actually China's benefit in being a manufacturing country is that the supply chains uh, go to China, come from China. That really hasn't changed that much in the last few years. And having that supply chain benefit and having access to lower cost labor and materials uh, helps China to push farther ahead in areas like robotics and advanced forms of humanoid robots, 
um, and embodied uh, robotics. Uh, that said, the U.S. is ahead in all of these technologies. China is just faster to market and much, much lower in cost. And going back to your point about open source versus closed source, it, it, it's come a little bit counterintuitive that DeepSeek may have gone open source and perhaps eased some of those concerns around Beijing's tight control of information. Will that help in the development of Chinese AI globally and the acceptance as well? Uh, it already has. Uh, DeepSeek and Alibaba's uh, Quen have both gained a lot of traction globally. These are the top two performing open source engines in the world, and there are others from China. The American open source is well behind. So while the whole world may or may not want to use Chinese software, the fact is that open source, the models are available for you to take without charge to do whatever you want. And you can uh, remove anything you don't want, add anything you need. And that flexibility, openness, actually gains trust in many you know, American universities. Uh, the students and researchers are using Chinese models, uh, not because they're Chinese, but because they're open. And I think the interesting uh, situation that is that when you look at model U.S. versus China, is actually not so much who's better, because three or four months isn't going to make that much difference. But who is open and who is closed? And the American business models and their aspiration for AGI and their need to raise ever more money makes it rather difficult for them to open source their best models. And they haven't. You've been alluding there to how the decoupling between the U.S. and Chinese AI has in a way been beneficial for Chinese development. But how do you think this decoupling affects the entire AI ecosystem and consumers, users of it as well? Uh, traditionally, the Chinese users have been the first to embrace and adopt technologies, and that has led to China being faster in mobile and earlier AI revolution. Uh, but this time, things are a bit different because uh, U.S. developed ChatGPT first and uh, educated the market first. Uh, what we are seeing now is after maybe uh, almost two years after ChatGPT was launched, a year and a half, uh, with the launch of um, uh, DeepSeek, that has really educated the market. So I think people are uh, excited now about uh, the, the, the chatbots, the LLMs, and the agents. So I think the China market will grow very rapidly, even though it uh, started perhaps a year and a half uh, later than the American market. It's definitely one of the next frontiers. I think we should see a lot of uh, usage of these uh, robots. Uh, keep in mind, they're rather expensive. So it's also possible that when China reduces the cost, in this case, not just by a factor of 20, 30 percent, but a factor of five to 10, as we're seeing companies like Unitree uh, really building um, American quality robot uh, at the fraction of the cost, I think that may actually make the usage uh, scenarios happen faster in China. And also the use of Chinese um, robotics is not something that's currently uh, affected by the geopolitical pressures. So I think the robotic companies that Sinovation has funded and also other companies we have not funded, we're seeing um, quite a bit of successful export business to other countries because the Chinese robots right now uh, has a quality parity with the top American robots and the dramatic cost advantage.